Hello, my name is Dennis, and welcome to my Trailer Park White Trash Mobile Home Kitchen. I really do live in a mobile home, in a trailer park, and this is my kitchen. For this video, I'm going to be making traditional custard pie. My mom used to make custard pie. She would make it every holiday season. Well, not every holiday season. I used to ask her to because I love custard pie. I grew up on custard pie. It's relatively simple to make. It's a traditional custard. When my mom passed away, I figured out how to make this myself. And whenever I eat it, it brings back memories of childhood. I'm making it this week because here in the USA, we're in the middle or we're coming up on Thanksgiving week. What is the traditional pie that people make every Thanksgiving? Pumpkin pie, which makes people in other countries wonder about us because they think of pumpkin as a squash that you serve with butter and salt and herbs. But this is the USA. We do anything we want. However, why not break with tradition and make custard pie or make it in addition to pumpkin pie? If you don't want to make it for Thanksgiving, save it for Christmas. It's a great pie for Christmas. So let's get into the ingredients for making traditional custard pie. For this recipe, I'm going to be using one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. This is scooped rather than sifted. If you don't know the difference between scooped and sifted, look up the white bread recipe on the website. It gives a full explanation at the end. I actually weigh my flour because when baking, it's important to have accurate measurements. So this weighs exactly eight ounces. So eight ounces of all-purpose flour. I have three tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of water, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and I have one large egg and three-eighths of a cup of butter. The egg and the butter is at room temperature. That's important, and you'll see why when I go to mix the ingredients for my, my uh, pie shell. And then for the filling, I'm using six eggs here. Actually, I'm going to be using two whole eggs. These are large eggs, and then four egg yolks. The egg whites I'll save for making cat's tongues. That's a French cookie if you want the recipe for that. That's also on the website. Then I have two-thirds of a cup of regular granulated sugar, two cups of whole milk. I have one teaspoon of vanilla extract, and then I have a half a teaspoon of fresh ground nutmeg that I'm going to be putting in a little shaker jar so I can dust it over the uh, top of my pie when I put it in the oven. So those are the ingredients for making a traditional custard pie. To start combining our crust, I'm going to be putting the flour and the sugar into a large bowl. I have this on a rubber mat so it won't make a lot of noise when I'm doing this. And then just combine that, set it aside, and then do the wet ingredients. I put the water the salt, and one egg. Again, the egg is at room temperature. And then just combine this with a whisk. And then I'm going to, I'm going to add the room temperature butter. And I want to break this butter up in this liquid until it forms small beads. Okay, that's broken up into small beads. And then I'm going to work this into the flour. I'm just going to use a rubber spatula here. As this combines, it'll break up. It'll look like it's not going to form a pie crust. But it does. It All right. I'm ready to start combining with my hands here. So just get your hands into it and bring this together. And this comes together fairly quickly. And then the last step will be to lightly knead this until smooth. Okay. So that's combined. I'm going to put that on the counter. And then I'm just going to 
knead this lightly. I don't want to overwork this. I just want to knead it a little bit until it's smooth. And that's already feeling smooth. You can see I only kneaded that for what? 15, 20 seconds? Not much. And then I'm going to wrap this in plastic and let it sit for a bit. The dough has been resting for a while, so I'm going to start shaping it. I've got a little flour duster here. I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try doing it on parchment paper. So I think it'll make it easier to turn it over without tearing the dough. Kind of use my hands around the edge while I'm pressing down to try to prevent it from tearing. It's going to tear a little bit. See, this makes it a lot easier to just spin around and work with it on parchment paper. I'm a big fan of parchment paper. I use it for all kinds of things. And you can see, for shaping it with my hands, it's coming out pretty decent. A little bit of tearing around the edges, but that's, that's normal. All right. So I'm pretty sure that's going to be fine. Yes, that'll be fine. I'm going to butter my pie plate a little bit. I don't know that it's necessary. There's so much butter in the dough that I don't think it's going to stick. But just in case. And then lift this up. Turn it over into the pie plate. Get this adjusted a little bit. Ease it in around the edges. And if you want, you can make a fancy top to this. I use my fingers and I just kind of pinch it around the edge. Should have cut my fingernails. I'm making fingernail marks. Just to kind of give it a little bit of a fancy fluted edge. My mom used to use a fork. She would make what looked like a serrated, almost like a corn edge, coin edge rather. So there's that. I'm going to put my sheet back in and I'm going to put beans in there as like pie weights. And this bakes in a 450 degree oven for about 10 minutes. This is what they call baking blind. The filling isn't in there yet. That'll pre-bake our pie filling, our pie crust rather, and then we'll put the filling in. I'm actually going to combine the filling while this is baking. To combine my filling ingredients, I'm going to use a food processor. I'm going to separate four of these eggs because I'm going to use four egg yolks in the filling. These are really fresh eggs. And then I can use these, um, got a bit of a shell in there. I can use these egg whites to make cat's tongues which is a French cookie made with egg whites, sugar, butter, vanilla, and a little bit of flour. If you want a recipe for making cat's tongues, it's on the website, whitetrashcooking.com. All right. That's one nice thing about having recipes for things that you're going to not use for other recipes, such as egg whites. You can always make cat's tongues. And then put two whole eggs in here. And then just whir this up a little bit just to break up those egg whites mostly. That's what I'm mostly concerned about. All right. And then add the sugar. The 
two cups of milk. The sugar won't dissolve completely in this food processor. Food processor, food processors. There's the vanilla going in. Food processor is good for chopping things up, but it's not a good blender, especially when you're trying to dissolve something like sugar. So what I'm going to do is take this filling and move it to a bowl. And then use a spatula to stir it until the sugar is dissolved. I have to wait for the pie crust to finish baking anyways. There's all the sugar sitting in the bottom of this bowl, this food processor bowl. So I'm just going to stir this for a few minutes. This will dissolve that sugar and then this will be ready to go into the pie crust. Here is my pie shell fresh from the oven. I'm going to take these beans out and set them aside. And then I'm going to put the shell right back in the oven. I'm not going to put the pie filling in yet because I worry about this, it sloshing while I'm moving this to the oven. So I'll show you why I took out one of the racks. The oven has been reduced to 200, 350 degrees. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour my filling. I've dissolved all my sugar. No sugar in the bottom. That's exactly what I want to see. And then I put my ground nutmeg in a little duster. And I'm going to use this now to pour the filling into the pie shell in the oven. So here we go. Carefully pour that in so it doesn't slosh up over the sides. Don't burn your hand on the roof of the oven. Usually I can get all the filling in. Yes, all the filling is going in. It's not rising up too high. And then I'm going to use my shaker here to shake some nutmeg on the surface. Oh, that's going to be beautiful. Just beautiful. All right, so that bakes at 350 degrees for 35 to 45 minutes. Because it's low in the oven, I'm going to set the timer for 45 minutes. So here is my pie fresh from the oven. I have my coffee ready. I checked the internal temperature and it was well above 170, actually well above 180 degrees. So I know this is thoroughly cooked all the way through. I have my coffee ready. Now all I do is just stand here and stare at it. Come on, cool, cool. So I can have my dessert. Come on, come on. My pie has cooled. Actually, this is chilled from the refrigerator. I've been waiting for this all day. Oh, anticipation. This is going to be so good. I love custard pie. Mmm. 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 -hmm. It's sweet. It's creamy. It has a delicious custard flavor to it. I'd much rather have this than pumpkin pie. I like pumpkin pie, but custard pie is so good. So think about making this for the holidays instead of or in addition to your pumpkin pie because this is just so good. I got to go have my dessert. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, 
visit the White Trash Cooking website and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.